Hi guys and welcome back to another video. I have been putting off filming this video for a few days now because I don't know where to start with it. There is so much to say. I don't want to say the wrong thing and upset people that are still in the army but this is going to be my Q&A on being in the British Army. This is going to be my experience and my experience only because I'm the only one that sat here and obviously everyone's experience in the British Army is very, very different. Obviously I've heard things from Danny, from other people and I know that not everyone's experience is like mine. But for this video I'm going to sort of, I'm going to intro it by sort of talking about the process and, excuse me, like the training and then my general experience and then I've got some questions that you guys asked me from Instagram that I will try and get through as many as possible because there are so many to answer. I had absolutely no idea about anything to do with the army um, before joining. I'd never planned to join, it wasn't something that I wanted to do at school, it wasn't something that I thought about doing after school. I joined at 22 years old which was quite late, um, not quite late but like a lot of people that I went to training with joined at 18 and you can join at 16, 17 as well but you just do basically a separate um, basic training, you go somewhere else, you go to Harrogate and yeah it wasn't something that I'd ever really thought about doing. I sort of, I think I came across something online and then me and my dad went to the career centre in Luton and I had like a sort of mini interview, not an interview but just like a little chat with the guy there and he showed me like what was on offer and you know the jobs that you could do in the army and it honestly I wouldn't say you sold me a dream but wow it it sounded incredible I was like oh my god I want to do that and obviously you watch things like Our Girl and the army get, does get shown on TV to be like the most incredible thing which it is don't get me wrong like it is incredible but um I wouldn't say I've been overly lucky like the first two years yeah I had a great time I've been in the army for five years by the way um but the last three years again I think I've just been very unlucky the regiment that I was at wasn't for me I wouldn't say like I've had I've, I've had the best five years if that makes sense like I've learned so much and I've experienced so much that you wouldn't experience in a normal job don't get me wrong and I wouldn't change it um I just wish for me that it went differently because when I joined I did think I'd be doing the full 24 year service like I thought I'd do my whole career there because that's what I wanted to do like I had so much passion for it at the start which unfortunately just gradually got less and less and less but I'll go into that so yeah I went to the career um the careers office and decided that I wanted to be a medic. There's basically loads of different trades that you can join. So you join the army and then you pick your trade. It could be a chef, it could be a driver, it could be um, in the armoured corps, which Danny is, I'm still not overly sure of his job role by the way. Um, me as a medic, that's what I wanted to do. You can also be a clerk, so you could do like admin. There are lots of job roles that you can do within the army, which is great. Initially, I didn't want to be a medic. I wanted to go in the infantry because my granddad, he was a grenadier guard and that was something that I'd always like looked up to in a way. That was for me the job that I'd always wanted to do. However, when I joined in 2017, the infantry wasn't open to females. It was literally like the year after, I think 2018, it opened up to women, which was a bit annoying. Um, if I joined a year later, I would have been able to do the job role that I wanted to do. Just shut that, that's actually really annoying. There we go, that's better. I remember sitting in the careers office telling him that I wanted to join infantry and he said, well, sorry, that's not really an option. Um, I said so what's the next best thing and he said well probably a combat medical technician because you can be sort of amongst the front line um, with the infantry so I thought oh, okay so I looked into that and that's the job role that I chose so it's a CMT which stands for combat medical technician before you start basic training there's like a few things you have to do it's like a little selection process I think they do like some psychological tests actually they do medical checks um, fitness tests which I'll also get into a bit later they do all that and then you pass blah, blah blah I think I got an A which is like the highest grade you can get um, and then they give you a date to start your basic training so basic training is 14 weeks long so you're 14 weeks away from family I think at seven weeks you get a weekend to come home and see your family basic training has nothing to do with your job role it's basically just like army green skills learning how to become a soldier and yeah that was honestly like I'd say the best 14 weeks. I had such a good time at basic training. I made so many good friends. I've literally like got my best friend from basic training and the instructors I looked up to so much. I just thought they were incredible. I thought they were great at what they did. And it is very much like, I don't know if you guys have seen those programs on TV um, to do with basic training and to do with joining the army where you've got like room inspections and you have to be stood by your beds at certain times. It is very much like that. I loved that. I loved a bit of routine. I loved a bit of structure. And it was just something that I felt I was quite good at. Also, fitness is a very, very big thing in basic training. If you're fit, then you are 
well respected amongst the instructors I believe. If you're gonna start basic training one thing I'd say is to make sure you are relatively fit um, before joining but again I'll talk about fitness a bit later on because some of you asked some questions about that. So 14 weeks basic training done, pass out parade done, you then start phase two training which for me obviously being a medic that's what my training was for. I can put that up there. My phase two training which was after basic training was six months um, at Litchfield in Birmingham and I again didn't have a bad time I quite enjoyed it I found the medical stuff quite hard um, I think it's very intense you do learn a lot in a short space of time my course we were actually there for a year because when we got there there was a backlog of medics this is where it starts to sort of all come together there was a lot of people wanting to be a combat medical technician to the point where we had to wait six months to start our course basically so we had six months of really not doing a lot um, we did some PT we sort of delivered a few lessons to each other started our medic stuff let's say June time and you've got tests you've got lessons you're going out on exercise to put what you've learned into practice I and mean, that was good like I had a really good time there I actually sprained my ankle during phase two so I did miss out on a few things but it didn't matter like I still stayed with my course I still moved along with my course we passed out in I think October yeah, October. So we were there just less than a year. We were there about 10 months. October 2018, I passed out of phase two. So when you're in phase two, um, you then pick what regiment you want to go to. Now, this is where like you think, oh God, the real job's starting now. Like this is where it's going to get good. Um, and that was really exciting for me. Like I really couldn't wait to start actually getting on with the job and getting into the real army, like just being out of training. I think there were three options for me. I think I had Germany... Catrick and Preston were the three places I could have gone to. I picked Catrick. Then I started at five medical regiment in Catrick in October 2018 and I have been there ever since. This is where my journey for me goes a little bit downhill um, and I think if I'd gone somewhere else it might have been different. It wasn't until I got to five med that I thought actually being a medic isn't for me um, and I didn't really love it and I didn't really want to do it. But then I thought, actually, I'm really into my fitness. I'm really good at the fitness side of things. I think I'm going to join the PT Corps, which you can't join the PT Corps until you're in the army anyway. Like, that's not an option. Um, when you start basic training, you can't be like, you can't join the army to be in PT Corps. You basically have to do your time in the army. You have to get, get to a certain rank. And then you can say, OK, I'm going to go PT Corps. So I'd been at five med for like six months and I made it very very clear to everyone I want to go PT Corps that's my passion I'm into fitness I want to be a personal trainer in the army and then I can go PT Corps god I'm getting all disheveled because it's something I'm very passionate about and it makes me I don't know I don't know I don't know <laughs> so I made that very clear and they put me in the gym um pretty much immediately like I'd say yeah six months into being five med they put me as a trainee in the gym which is called like a potential PTI so you work in the gym alongside actual PTIs before you go on your course. They just get you up to fitness. They get you taking a few lessons just to sort of understand the basics of it and get your confidence up, which I thoroughly enjoyed. Like that was the route that I wanted to go down. I was really excited. I went on my PT course. I've been at Catterick a year or so, I'd say, and then I was a personal trainer. And I thought, great, okay, so I'll promote soon and then I can transfer to PT core. Promotion didn't happen. Basically, the person that writes your reports, um, if they don't know you very well, they can't write much about you. And the person that was writing my report was literally changing every six months, at least. I never had the same troop sergeant who was writing my report for, for no more than, yeah, six months. Um, so they never really got to know me. I was working in the gym, so they didn't spend any time with me, which just meant my reports weren't very good. And I think when people came in to the regiment, and were writing my reports they didn't realize how long i'd been there another thing as well is that a lot of medics this might come as a surprise to you but a lot of medics don't like going to the gym <laughs> they don't like keeping up with their fitness they just don't and at my regiment i found that quite a bit and i found that the people that were writing my reports didn't like pti's because we were fit and we had to take them on pt and I think a lot of people thought, well, she's a PTI, but she hasn't shown that she can do much as a medic. Like, she needs to come and show that she can do med stuff as well, which was fine. But there was no other PTIs to replace me in the gym. So I was stuck in the gym 
um, which was fine for me. I was quite happy with that because I wanted to go PT call anyway. So I was like, just keep me in the gym. Like, this is what I want to do. I'll promote soon and then I can finally go PT call. But it just literally just didn't keep happening for four years. Four years I should have promoted and I didn't. One of the years was when, so I just passed my course and then COVID hit. Um, and I was still taking lessons throughout COVID, but the person that was writing my report wasn't there. They were deployed somewhere or they weren't coming to PT. So when they wrote my reports, they couldn't see that I was delivering good PT sessions. And they thought, well, she's only done, she's only been a PTI for a few months. Like she can't, we're not going to promote her yet. Basically, we'll just wait. I'm sure there's other reasons as well as to why I probably didn't promote. For me, it was a no brainer that I should have promoted at least three years ago. Um, the PTI course in itself is a promotion course like you have to be given so you can be basically be given like a local rank so I was given one rank up just temporarily to go on the course which proves that yeah like you have to be of a certain level to go on this course um, because you are delivering lessons to a very very large amount of people um, sometimes I'll be delivering lessons to like the whole regiment which is 100 people so you'd think like doing that you've got some sort of level of authority but as soon as I came off my PTI course they took the um, rank the local rank off me and it was never to be seen again i really don't know and i can't put my finger on it to this day um as to the real reason as to why i didn't promote and i would say yes that is the main reason as to why i have left the army because i was just getting more and more behind and it was upsetting me more and more and more that i was losing my love for the army and i just felt like i had nothing to give towards the end of it it was very disheartening knowing that you can knowing that you could be of a certain level and knowing that you were good enough to have been at that level and no one else seeing the potential in you. That was very, very frustrating for me. Like I knew I could give so much more, but I wasn't being able to give it because they weren't giving me the rank to give it. And also the main thing um, being that I couldn't go and join PT call, which is what I wanted to do because, excuse me, because I wasn't given the rank. So I've stayed a private for four years, five years. And I do think if I'd gone somewhere else, potentially, um, that would be very different. That's that's my experience. I feel like I'm waffling so much, but there's so much to say because it frustrates me so much. There is so much to say, but I just don't know how to get it across without sounding frustrated. <laughs> I feel like I've spoken to you guys about the process in a way. So like my time in the army, what I did, how I got there, the times that I was there for. Um, so I think what I'm gonna do, I've got some questions on my phone that you guys asked on Instagram. So I don't go off on a tangent because I feel like I could easily go off on a tangent about this subject. I'd just like to say as well, being a medic, so I was posted to Catterick. When you promote, you get posted somewhere else. So you're not at the same place for more than two to three years. Obviously I was because I didn't promote, I was there four years. But you're really not meant to be at the same place for more than two to three years as a medic. So I was at Catterick and then if I promoted after two years or three years I would have been posted somewhere else so you are literally always 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 on the go that's something that I did not know before joining um in hindsight again I would have loved to have joined infantry because I feel like same with Danny's regiment with the light dragoons you're more of a family unit like he will always be light dragoons and all of his friends that are in the light dragoons will always be there and they'll always be friends and they'll always be up in Catterick in the same place. Um, whereas me, all my friends that I've made since joining the army where I left, I don't work with any of, them, any of them anymore. Like you are constantly moving on the go, changing location, that you're making new friends sort of every two years, which is great. But like I formed some real, real bonds um, at Five Med and then people promote and they leave. And it's very, very sad Like that that's something um, I kind of wish I did differently. I wish I joined a regiment that was a family regiment because medics just, it's not a family regiment. You're always on the go. First question is funny. What is your actual job? I've briefly touched on this, but if I didn't go in the gym, oh my God, like I've literally missed a whole chunk. Basically, if I wasn't in the gym, I would be working in my squadron and day-to-day -day jobs included things such as litter picking, sweeping the hangar, um, cleaning vehicles, counting equipment to make sure that nothing's gone missing, cleaning rifles, uh, what else, making up lessons, 
that we could deliver to each other about anything, literally anything. Um, it was a very much past the time job, I would say. I don't think you gain a lot out of it. You sometimes go on the odd exercise with your troop for a couple of nights or with the squadron for a couple of nights while you do some green skills. Um, but really other than that, you're sort of waiting around to be potentially posted to another unit or sent away on deployment for a few months. Um, I, me and my friends always laugh, a bit like a phase three when you get your first medical regiment posting it's like phase three because you're just waiting around to be promoted so then you can actually get posted to another regiment and be attached as their medic um, so five medical regiment is all the medics together and then when you promote you get posted to for example like dragoons and you're their medic and then you do med stuff with them so my actual job role as a medic at five med was a cleaner I was a full-time cleaner. Medical regiments are tough and there's a lot of you trying to battle for promotion. Don't get me wrong, a lot of people love being a medic, but I just didn't have the love for it and I never ex actually experienced being a proper medic. I did a placement down at Harrogate um, for six months, um, working with the recruits that are joining that were 16 and 17 years old um, whilst they were in their basic training. So I worked in their med, med centre for a bit. I just didn't love it. Um, salary, that's a really, really good one. So when you join, um, I think my first paycheck in basic training was like £800 a month. I don't know yearly what, what we're on, but this is what I remember in my head. Eight, I think I got about £800. Every six months, maybe it goes up a little bit. So monthly, I was taking home about 1500 for the last three years. And then when I went, I went away skiing to Norway, they were overpaying me quite a bit for quite a while and I thought oh this is good like I'm going I think I thought my pay I thought my pay had just gone up and then they realized oh stop we've been overpaying her a bit and they then started to take it off me so for the last six months before um leaving I was taking home 1300 pounds a month for six months and you could be doing you know it's long hours you could get put on guard at the weekend I don't think it's good pay until you promote and until you know you're a sort of a corporal sergeant wage um, it's not great but equally you know you get you do get a lot of time off and some days you finish at like one o'clock um, some days you have a late start on Mondays we don't start until 10 so really it's hit and miss but like the last six months were a struggle for me because I was only taking home 1300 pounds because they'd overpaid me and they realized and then they have to take it off me um, gradually. And something else that just made me think like, I feel like I can do better elsewhere. But every time you promote, the wage does go up quite a bit. Um, best bit of the army. So I don't, I don't feel like I've been overly negative. I hope I've not, but <laughs> there are a lot of positives. Like I have loved so much of my time in the army and most of those bits have been to do with sport and been to do with exercise and competitions and shooting competitions. I've done so many things over the last five years. I've been on the shooting competition three years in a row, um, which was incredible because it was like sport and shooting. You'd have, like, you'd have to run and shoot and oh, it was just great. Like I loved that so much and I'm quite competitive anyway. So that side of things were really good. I did a lot of swimming competitions. I did a lot of cross country. Recently, you guys saw that I went to Cyprus. That was literally with the army. I think we paid a couple hundred quid for that. Went to Gambia very recently, traveled Gambia. My PTI course was really good as well. Like I had the best time. I made my two like closest friends there. Um, that was nine weeks, the PTI course. And it's basically the normal British army fitness test, but you have to hit a certain standard in it. I'll make sure to leave like links to the fitness test, like the joining application and stuff below, just in case any of you want to have a nosy. And, have a bit more of a delve into it but my PTI course I loved and that was for me definitely when I was like this is I really want definitely want to go PT court here um but again just didn't happen any other highlights any other highlight I'd say just the sport <laughs> I would say definitely just the sport side of things um someone asked why did I leave after being promoted I didn't tell you guys but basically my last report um I was really really unhappy with it I thought they'd said they'd said in it something like she works too much in the gym, she needs to come and be a medic. The third year in a row, that's pretty much what they said again. But it was worded not very nicely and um, it made me really upset, I cried about it. I basically wrote in the comments box, which not a lot of people do because not normally there's a good outcome. However, I wrote 
I was up, I was at work till like six o'clock writing this essay about my thoughts and feelings and how I feel like I should have been promoted, etc, etc. And it went off to Glasgow where they bought it and they'd obviously read it and decided, yeah, do you know what this girl does to deserve promotion? So I did get, prom well, I came off the board. I didn't obviously get promoted because I'm leaving, but I came off the board. Um, so that's why I still decided to leave. I felt like even if I was promoted, I'd still be really unhappy and um, still not want to give my full potential. Ah, oh, accommodation. So a few of you asked, what's the accommodation situation like? Because you guys have seen that like the last year I've been living um, in my own rented place with Danny, um, which you can do from any point when you join after phase two. So phase one and phase two, you're given accommodation. I think you're in phase one, we were in like a 12 man room and then phase two, you're in four man rooms. And then when you get to um, your unit, your regiment, your, you've got your own room. And I think, what's the, what do you pay for that? I think you literally pay like 80 pounds or something a month for that room. Um, Ours had its own bathroom and it was great, but like you've got shared kitchen facilities. Um, yeah, if, it's really cheap accommodation, but that's there if you want the option to stay there, which most people do take. Um, I was just very fortunate that Danny and I could afford to move out and rent our own place. I think if you're married in the army, you do get given a house which you pay monthly for. Just It's not your own house, it's like an army house that you can live in if you've got family, if you've got kids. Um, so there's the option to do that as well. I describe it as like, university halls not that i've ever been to a university but that's how i described it it was like a strict university halls where they'd come around and inspect your rooms every now and then um you'd have like litter picking every like th i think three times a week like monday wednesday and friday morning you'd have to go and pick the litter around the blocks accommodation in the army was great someone said is it like our girl it couldn't be any further from being like our girl like <laughs> Honestly, sometimes I watch that and I just have to laugh because I love that show so much. I might actually go and watch it after this because it's like, it's like, oh, this is what it could be. Or this is what people think it is. And it's, it's quite funny, really, because it's really just not like that at all. Michelle Keegan, Love Her to Pieces, and I think they did a great job of it. And it does put the army in a good light, but it's not as glamorous as that. And um, she was a busy girl, Michelle. Really, really busy. Someone said, do you find it's different being a woman in the army? Controversial, yeah, I would say yes. I'd say women have to work a lot harder than men to be recognised um, because it is a very male dominated environment like at my regiment not so much because there are a lot more females that want to be medics but at Danny's regiment he's got four females um, I think in his whole regiment. I don't know if I can delve much more into that to be honest. <laughs> yeah I can't really talk about that too much but from my experience yeah I do think it's very different being a woman and um, we say the term if your face fits quite a lot but my face for some reason just didn't fit I don't know what it was um even when I left I was speaking to a few of the officers and they were like maybe your face just didn't fit which is just mad like it's so mad to hear and another thing when I left as well everyone was like god they're losing a good one which made me really well up like the amount of people that said that and I started to well up because I thought well it's you guys that have done this to me like you guys have made me not those people in particular, but that regiment have, has made me like want to leave and I could have been good. <laughs> anyway, does it put a strain on relationships? That's a good question. A lot of people ask how Danny and I get on um, when he's away. I think when you're in the army, you just come to terms with the fact that you are going to be away quite a bit. Every now and then he'll go away for a couple of weeks. It's normal. I spoke to a few of my civvy friends about um, how he was going away and they're like, God, I wouldn't be able to cope with that. Like it's too much. Like I wouldn't be able to be away from my partner for that long because you're with them all the time like I know in my head that he does go away quite a bit and likewise when I was in I was away quite a bit as well however he is going away in December for six months which I feel extremely sick about I won't lie um six months is a very long time and he gets back just before we get married we both signed up to do that job we knew what it entailed and when we got together we knew what it entailed and for us it's really not an issue at all because we've both experienced it we can relate and I can relate to him going away and he can relate to me being at home um, so it's for us it's something that's not an issue but it can put a strain on some relationships definitely I'd say especially if your partner was a civilian um, and didn't have any understanding of the army it might be a bit more confusing to understand but we both understand it and it's just part of life and it's part of being in the army um, and so for us it doesn't put a strain on things when he's here we like to do things we like to keep ourselves busy like we're going to New York very soon but then that makes up for the time that he's away um someone said advice for training so advice for 
becoming fit enough to be in the army. There, I'm sure there is somewhere a program um, on the British Army website that tells you, you know, how to become fit enough to join the army. There are two fitness tests, two main fitness tests. One of them is called an SCR, Soldier Conditioning Review, and another one's the other one's called the RFT, which is something fitness test. Oh god, I don't know. I don't know. It's called the RFT and the SCR. SCR is very much indoor gym based so it's things like a broad jump, it's things like doing a deadlift, pull ups, um, a, a ball throw and that's just to test like basic fitness to see sort of what level you're at. Oh and there's like a 2k run in there as well, some sprints. So that's that and you have to get a certain level on those things to be able to join. And then the RFT is very much an outdoors based test where you've, you're carrying weight. I'm trying to dumb this down. Sorry if you're in the army and you're listening to me talk like this, but I'm just trying to describe it to people who haven't got a clue. Tabbing, you're running with the weight. Leopard crawling, um, you're doing a bit of fire maneuver where you've got the weapon and you're running with the weapon. <laughs> um, you're also doing some like farmer's walks with jerry cans. So it is quite intense. That's a long process, that RFT as well. I think it's like a couple of hours, two to three hours it takes. Another question is what was your day-to-day -day like whilst in the army? Um, I won't go off my day to day because mine was different because I was in the gym and I was one of literally like three people out of a good hundred that were in the gym but for my regiment to so wake up god like half seven they'd have areas where you litter pick at eight o'clock you'd then go down to the hangar to your squadron and you'd have a parade at half eight where they just do like a register it's literally like school I won't lie like you just have a register um and then you would sort of wait to be told what jobs need to be done on that day um, you might, on a Thursday, I think they had clinical training, so you'd go and sit on some lessons taken by doctors. Um, and then you'd go on lunch at half twelve to half one, come back at half one, do another parade, make sure everyone was there, no one had skived, bunked off. And then in the afternoon, you'd probably have a few more jobs. Um, you might have to check the stores, go through some equipment, maybe do some rifle cleaning. And then at half three you would have PT which would be taken by someone like myself. My squadron would come in at half three and I would take them for an hour's PT and that could be anything like there was a PT program so it would either be something like a run or a circuit or like a green base lesson that I would take them on um, and then half four finish the day and then that's that's the end of the day really. You could also um, be told you're on guard so guard is where you are standing at the gate um, letting people in and out of camp, just protecting the camp really, your presence is there, you've got a presence outside of the camp, um, you're making sure that no one's allowed in the camp without ID. And yeah, that was a week long, it was quite tough, like I did it, I did do it, god, I did it enough times. <laughs> um, but it was a week and you'd do like either the day shift or the night shift for seven days. A lot of my semi friends say, can we plan this in a few months time? And I'd be like, probably not, no, like I could say yes now, but when it comes around to it at the time, like, I have no idea what I'll be doing. So it's more of a lifestyle than job the army, that's definitely something I'd say. Someone said, how long does Danny plan on staying in for? He'll definitely do his full 24 years, probably. Like, he absolutely loves it, and he has had the best experience ever. Like, his regiment, I'd love to be in his regiment. They're great. They all love each other, and <laughs> um, he's really had a good experience, and he's good at his job, and he loves his job. He's very passionate about it. He's promoting through the ranks as he should be doing. He's He loves it and I'm really, really pleased that he loves it. Because for me, in a way, I've still got a bit of an attachment to the army. Um, I don't think I'm going to join reserves just because I don't think I'm going to have time um, with what I'm going to do now. Another thing is, this is actually really interesting. You say like, one of the questions was about women in the army. All of my friends, every single one of them, I'm going to go through the names. It was me, Wednesday, Tams, Ruby, Kat, Jess... I'd say that was the main group, Stacey. Um, there was there was a lot of us. There was like a close knit of us, close group of us. It just so happens that they were all girls. There were some guys as well, but we've all left. Every single one of them has left. It means for me that, okay, it wasn't just me that felt like this and there are other people that feel like this. Don't get me wrong, don't get me wrong. A lot of my friends, not my close friends, but a lot of friends I had are still in and they still like it and they still enjoy it. I think it's I think it's being a medic. I think it's really hard and tough. Yeah, so just pick your job very wisely. There's been a lot of ups and a lot of downs. I just wish for me that my experience had been different and I wish I was sitting here 
telling you how much I love the British Army and how I can't wait to serve my full 24 years. I absolutely would recommend joining the army, like 100% people that absolutely love it, like Danny for example, he loves it and he's been very lucky and not even lucky, like all his friends love it as well. I think I have waffled on enough. I'm really sorry if I've missed any questions, I feel like I probably have this so much there is so much you can talk about and I hope I've not put a negative spin on it. I've literally just given my experience, which unfortunately wasn't a great one. Also, it was an amazing one. Like I have experienced so much. Oh my God, this is so hard to say without getting it right or wrong. If any of you there are watching this video um, and you're in the process of joining, amazing. Like I'm so pleased for you and you you probably will have like the best time because it has been the best five years. But yeah, if you weren't sitting here in the process of joining or you're in basic training or you're thinking about it, just read into it. Definitely read into it. Um, if you want to DM me on Instagram, I'll try and get back to some of you. If you want to put questions in the comments, again, I'll try and get back to some of you. I'll leave all the links down below about the joining process and just leave links to the Army website. If this video has been insightful to you, if you're thinking about joining, I hope I've not put you off because honestly joining is amazing and I definitely think people should do it. Not everyone is going to have a bad experience like me and not a lot of people have. Um, I've just been very unfortunate. And yeah, I hope you've enjoyed watching and I'll see you very soon in my next video. Bye guys!